Hi there everybody, thanks very much for coming along to this next Facebook Live. I'm going to be adding our amazing speaker just to make sure that she's uh, coming on this time. We had some technical difficulties, so hopefully um, that will be okay. This live is going to be dedicated to um, the up and coming event uh, that's taking place next uh, in four weeks time. And we're going to be having uh, uh, Kelly Tyler on this live who's going to be speaking about the key assets required to market yourself as, as a speaker, author, or a coach. And uh, she's going to be speaking at the event that's taking place on Saturday, Sunday, the 30th of September at the Holiday Inn in London. It's a women in business conference, my fourth one. And men are also welcome to attend this event. We're going to have about 200 people there. There's going to be 20 speakers covering ranges from investing in property. If you want to find out about property, social media, if you want to speak on stage, if you want to be a better speaker, if you want to improve your current relationship with yourself and also with your partner as well. Also, if you would like to find out about how to speak internationally and also speak at the up and coming events that are actually taking place that are coming up in the future as well. So our next speaker has just sent her an invitation. Hopefully she'll get that this time. Um, it's going to be Kelly Tyler. Kelly Tyler. She's one of the speakers. She's the founder of Speakers Insights and uh, she is going to be coming along this live to talk about all those topics as well. So let me just say hello to some of the people that's come along this live. Hi Deborah. Hi Daphne. How are you? Hi hi Teddy. Great to have you on the live. Louisa, Kelly, Kerry. Thanks for coming along to this live. Great to hear from you, Mo and Selena. Um, and we've had some technical difficulties here, and I'm not sure if Kelly has received that. Let me just try that again. Three, two, one. She's gonna come on. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, how are you doing, Kelly? Thanks for that. I don't know what happened before because we tested it and it was fine. Don't you love technology? Oh, geez. the main thing is do not get stressed. <laughs> don't panic. It's all under control. It's all under control. It's all chilling and great. So, Kelly, thanks so much for coming along to this live. I know you've had a busy day. You've been filming all day yeah. with your business. And uh, I'd like to thank you for, first of all, connecting. How I met Kelly, she saw me posting um, on Facebook a few months ago. I was looking for speakers. And she kindly shared it in her group. And she didn't have to do that. didn't cost her anything. And when people do those types of things for you, me personally, I take note of that. And um, we connected, we, have a, we had a conversation. And look, she's now speaking at uh, my up and coming massive conference, which takes place on four weeks on, on Sunday. So I'd like to publicly thank you for that, Kelly. And I'm sure, I'm sure that we, you know, when we had our conversation, we, we could see there was some synerg uh, lots of synergy and we're going to do a lot of collaboration in, in the future. So thank Definitely. you so much for that as well. You're welcome. Listen, listen, thanks for coming along to the live because you know it's a, it's a, uh, a lovely, what day is it today? Tuesday evening? Tuesday, Tuesday. yeah. <laughs> don't worry, it'll be Christmas soon. <laughs> oh, no, 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 tell me about it. And thank everybody for wishing me happy birthday a few days ago. And those of you that are on the live that didn't wish me happy birthday, I'm now going <laughs> to be blocking you um, now on this Facebook live to, to make sure. So I'm, glad, I'm glad I did. I want to know <laughs> why you were in a Liverpool top getting a, a pedicure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I like to do things differently. It was, it was stood out. <laughs> you well, definitely stand out. <laughs> well, one, one, the Liverpool top was a, a birthday present. And secondly, I wanted to spoil myself. And what better way to do that than in the, a Liverpool top? <laughs> Having a manicure or a pedicure. <laughs> pedicure. I don't do things in halves. <laughs> but listen, Kelly's speaking at um, the event at the weekend. And um, she's going to... She's a, she's a founder of Speakers Insight. So let's just get to crack on to who you are and what you do. Tell me about your background, Kelly, and how that helps you support speakers, authors, and coaches, please. Because um, lots of people, there's three Sharons that just joined the wall to live. Sharon Samuel, Sharon, Sharon Samuel, Sharon Adams, and Sharon Calix. Seems to be a popular name this evening, the word, the name Sharon. There we go. 
<laughs> and I see some of my friends like Michelle, who I work with, she's just joined and loads of people are on there. So it's, it's great. I know that that's one of the reasons why I connected with you, Des, because um, in the group that I run for speakers, authors and coaches called the Connection Hub, we're always promoting opportunities for speakers to, to um, share stages with people. So we've got your avatar. So why would we not promote this event? And I'm so passionate, as you can see, all these Sharons and people coming up. I'm so passionate for promoting women. Right. There are not enough women on stages specifically. So I, I'm all behind what you're doing, helping women get into business and stand out. Thank you. And the next level, the next stage is that now I'm going to be I've, I've actually created opportunities for women to speak internationally as well. Awesome. Yeah, of course so, you are. You're going all the way around the world, not just here. Oh, right? so it's all good. <laughs> just up the road. Only up the road. <laughs> and so, so tell and us so, about yourself. Yeah, so my background really is I've always worked with speakers, authors and coaches. So for the last, let's say, plus 10 years, um, it started with having, I set up a children's publishing house. So I used to produce books for children and education. My background's in psychology. So that was a, a natural progression for me. And then when I used to manage the authors in the publishing house, I'd realized how bad their marketing was and how they actually needed to help promote themselves. So uh, a step forward from that was when I set up my speaker agency called Stellar Speakers, where we manage speakers um, who aren't the celebrity type, the ones that are probably like most of your audience, most of the people on this live, where they're experts in their field, but people outside of their field probably would never have heard of them. So we still get them gigs in corporates and, and on expos and those types of paid stages, but they're not the motivational speakers that are, you know, Richard Branson sort of types of the world that everyone's heard of. And then as a result from doing that, I set up the company that you spoke about, Speaker Insight, with my business partner, Helena, where we're more of a consultancy for speakers, authors, and coaches to help them build a complete business around their IP, around their messaging, around who they are. Um, because that's one of the things that they don't realize when you want to be a speaker, author, or coach, and you want to make it more than a hobby, then there's a business behind it. So we've got the consultancy that helps them actually build the foundations of their business and, and make it into a, a real dream lifestyle occupation. So that's fantastic. it in a nutshell, really. <laughs> fantastic. So the shift from the psychology to that is amazing. Yeah, it's always been and my passion to work with people and help them reach their full potential. Um, and these are just avenues to do that, whether it's to get you on stage, whether it's to get your books promoted, or whether it's to position you better as a speaker, author, or coach. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing that. I mean, that's a, that's a good transition because you just used your brain to, to connect the dots there with that as well. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Take note, everybody. Fantastic. So what is a common desire that your audience wants, would you say? Okay. Um, I think people have always got the aspiration in mind. So if you're an author and you're watching this, your aspiration will be to have that best-selling book. If you're a speaker, um, most people want to be managed by an agent. They want to have keynotes that are like a weekly keynote, at 5K a for every 30-minute keynote they do, and have regular gigs that are being managed by somebody else. And yeah. if you're a coach, then it's about um, being able to stand out in that audience. So, you know, it's really a, a competitive place. If you're a life coach or, say, for example, you talk on leadership, then you've got so much competition. So how do you attract a business that people swarm towards you and choose you out over all those millions of people? So that's what I think my audience thinks that they want when they start in the business. And then they achieve it. So they get that, the, the, the gigs, they get the status, they get the, the clients coming in. And what I find is that then they end up in burnout. So they become overwhelmed. They're constantly swapping time for money. They're on the road all the time doing gigs. So they're never seeing their, their family or friends. And actually yeah. they come back to me and go, you know, that success that I was after. Thanks for helping me get that. And now I need to do something different. And this is where um, Helena and I talk about building a business on your terms. So this is where people go, I need to have a business that doesn't run me, doesn't rule my life. So we often help people work, uh, think about how they can reproduct their message, their purpose, their IP, how they can build a business where some of it will grow and scale without them having to be in their business through digital productization or working with teams or licensing their products. Those types of things are normally the step change that my audience wants, but they don't often know that they want it when they first start the journey. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally makes sense. And 
And one of the, I mean, you most probably agree with this, a lot, when people come to you that they, some of, a lot, I suppose a large selection of them need clarity. They, 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 they <laughs> am I talking the same? <laughs> I thought it was only me. I mean, your face said it all. They, they just need clarity. There's a lot of people, they, they've got the money and they've got it up there, yeah. but they don't know what they want to do. And, they can't and... articulate it very well. So it's like me when you say, oh, okay, I had the, the progression from doing psychology to publishing to agency to consultancy. Yeah. If I said that in one line to people at a networking event, they'd be like, sorry, what do you do? So that whole elevator pitch of saying what you do and who you serve really succinctly is a real art form. And it's where everyone needs to start. But then once they've got that, it's then how do I get that message that all that experience that I've got over my lifetime into a product, into a keynote, into a book. So it basically inspires and motivates others to do the same, but fast track it. That's the bit about clarity that they, they can't articulate it easily. Yeah. I, and I totally agree with that. Totally. I get that all the time when you speak to somebody, well, they want, can you help me with, yeah, I can help you. Uh, and they don't, they don't know what they want to do. Yeah. And then you go, you go, but you get there in, we get there in the end. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the thing when, when speakers, authors and coaches step into the realm of being an entrepreneur and a business owner, what you don't realize is just that there's a lot more that comes with that, right? There's a lot more responsibility than just writing a book or writing a speech or getting clients. There's, there's a more of a, the, as anyone here might've read the e -Myth. So the e -Myth is a great book to read, to understand if you're that technician business owner, because that's yeah. where most people go, oh, now I realize why I feel like I'm struggling in my business. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic information. Fantastic gems, everybody. Thanks, everybody that's on the live. We've got loads of people. We got, mm -hmm. uh, if everybody on the live, um, you can wish me happy birthday. I miss my birthday. <laughs> but if you can send me some love, I'd appreciate that. <laughs> but on a serious note, if you could just um, share this live as well, because these are some really good gems that, Kelly's providing. Hi, Thelma. Hi, Alia. Hi, Nicola. Hi, Charlotte. Hi, Lewis. Uh, Bucky D. That's family. Hi, Princess. Lisa. Ahmed. Oh, you can go. <laughs> oh, you can't leave <laughs> anyone out now. Can I know. <laughs> Obviously, they're not doing nothing. To, they're not doing anything tonight. Remerson. Dia. Evelangea. Uh, sorry if I get the names wrong. Sharon. Carol. Beth. <gasps> Uh, I'm going to come back to you guys and listen, we're going to carry on. So, Big love. Uh, big love. <laughs> For those of you that are on it, hi Clarissa, if you can share this as well, we'd really appreciate that because this is some really great gems that you're going to be getting here this Tuesday evening. So Kelly, what would you say some of the biggest mistakes that marketers make? Hi Tracy, Maris, Smolensky, hope you're well. What are some of the mistakes that you say they would make? So it's not so much a mistake this, but it's carrying on from the point that I was just saying. So when, when speakers, authors and coaches decide to, to do this as a, as a business, they don't realize what's involved. So they don't realize that, you know, that you need to do the finances, that you need to be uh, doing the marketing, the sales, the recruitment or the outsourcing of things. And actually all those things are things that most creatives hate, right? They're the, I just want to create stuff. I just want to create books or write keynotes or, or be in the spotlight. I just want to do my stuff. I just want to coach. And then when I say, yeah, but what about your full cash flow forecast? And what about, you know, your product sales pipeline? And what about your marketing and your social media scheduling and all of that? They can't stand it. So yeah. but this is the thing. If you want to have more of a business than a hobby, you need to treat it like a business. So I think the biggest mistake that speakers, authors and coaches make is not treating this seriously as a business and then trying to do it all themselves, right? That's, yeah. None of us can run businesses completely by ourselves because no. we're not designed to be good at everything. We've got our skill set and we need to work out, first of all, why are we doing this in the first place? What's my purpose in, in business? What do I want to impact that I want to make? What are my strengths? And who do I need to surround myself with to support me on the things that I hate doing or I'm not good at? And, and that doesn't mean that people think, oh, I haven't got the, the finances to recruit full-time staff. I am not talking full-time staff. I don't run any of my businesses with any full-time staff. It's all, yeah. you know, freelancers, it's apps, it's software, it's automation. It's having people and software do a lot of the work for you and having that support in the early days to set those systems up 
so that you can spend 80% of your time doing the bit that you love, which is the creation, the speaking, the coaching. And I think that's where people find it is a mistake because they end up falling out of love with their business. They wake up yeah. in the morning and see the to-do list as long as their arm and there's nothing really on there that inspires them. So the yeah. key is to, to really get clarity on what your strengths are, what you need to do, who you need to surround yourself with um, so that you can build a business your way and you don't hate your, your job that you've created because you've trapped yourself, right? You've trapped yourself in something that you thought was your dream, was your freedom and actually everything you do is stuff that doesn't inspire you. Well, excellent tips there. Thanks very much for that. And I would add to that that, um, that you need to decide that what you want to get involved with business is a viable business. Is there a demand for that as well? Yeah. And I've had people that, um, and you must have experienced this, that they've got this idea that they, they've got in, this, in their head this, this name of this idea of being at this particular business. And if you type it in, in Google, no one's heard of it. Right, you must have experienced that. I've had a lot of people say, and I've sort of said to them, No, look, um, look at who's doing what you are doing. If there's a demand for it, then obviously people want that, yeah. people are, are, are screaming out for that. Unless it's something like uh, completely random that you know you can go on Dragon's Den and maybe get in a, 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 a big for that, but people need to look at. Look at do the research before you know. Look at look at the the areas that are people doing that. Yeah. You know, if you want to be a dating, if you want to be a dating coach, if you want to be a business coach, niche that down. Don't don't just be a general one like that because you could niche it down. If you want to be a dating coach, you may want to work with single mothers for argument's sake. Then you just focus on those. Yeah. And then that way you will you will be known as the only person for that. And I think one of the other mistakes Kelly is supposed to be getting is that a lot of people call themselves a life coach. Mm -hmm. and when they call themselves i remember when i qualified as a life coach my certificate's right over there <laughs> right in 2000 and whatever it was i think it was 2009 i qualified as a life coach and i was all excited and pumped up i'm going to be a life coach and a life coach is helping everybody in the world i'm going to help you with your business i'm going to help you with your marketing i'm going to help you with <laughs> your fire and all of this and then i realized wow like you know i wasn't making any money because um no one was taking me seriously because right. the people that were making the money were the people that niched that particular area. Yeah. And I always say to people, do not call yourself a life coach yeah. because the, the majority of the people out there, they won't take you seriously if they call yourself a life coach. Niche it down, be a specialist in a, in a particular area and yeah. then that way you will be known for that, for that particular area. 100%. Do you agree? Yeah, I mean, how broader can you get than the word life? <laughs> life contains everything that we know. So that's where people go, well, really? I, I would never, if I was looking for business advice, I would never be Googling where can I find a life coach because I wouldn't no. automatically think a life coach is a business coach. So, you know, Google is our friend, guys, and Google keyword uh, tool research is the place to go to find out yeah. what is your ideal client? What are they searching for? What's the question they're asking Google that we want you to come up with as the number one solution to that? And broad terms like life coach have no description whatsoever. So you can't compete on that. You can't niche yourself down. And I agree with that. And also the thing is that everybody that's on this live is, once you you know what your who was in demand for, you can then use that with your marketing because yeah. you can talk that language and draw them in. So basically, you know, people, every one of our clients um, are lacking something. Yeah. And we as the expert provides the solutions to that problem that they lack. It's as simple as that. People come to me to help them with their business and speak on stage. People go to, to Kelly to, to enhance their business and improve the business in a particular area. So we know the areas that you lack. Someone yeah. comes to me and they're, having, they're, they're not getting speaking gigs or they lack confidence. I know I can put them on stage and wipe that out. So, so who are you known for? Because I've had a lot of people being a journalist and it's so important because people will talk about you. People talk about Kelly. People talk about myself. And what are they saying apart from I support the best football team in the world? <laughs> and I agree with that. I'm a Liverpool supporter too. Oh! So. <laughs> Not that That's we've got true. much to chant about. But I know, yeah. I know. I'm meant to be going to the Tottenham game, but I'm in two minds. I wait and see. I'll give you a shout when I get, get some tickets for the game. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're digressing. You're, you're, you're spot on, Des. I think one of the things that you've mentioned, there, and I'm really happy to share this in the comments after the live, is that 
um, the, the language that your ideal client's saying, you'll get that from marketing, you'll do it from doing the market research. And when you know what they're asking for, then you can create products, marketing around exactly what they're looking for. Digital and, products. And one of the things that I learned, um, there's a guy called um, John and Jeff Walker who um, have a, a brand called Product Launch Formula. Now, John used to be my business partner, so I got some real insight um, knowledge into how to do stuff. And he taught me how to do something called a seed launch. Now, I'm really happy to put, uh, we did a Facebook Live training on it, so I'm happy to put yeah. the link to that in here. So that's where you can create a product exactly on what your ideal client is asking for so you give them some sessions where you get their questions and answers you give them some advice but you get to create an awesome early stage product from doing the seed launch so when we when we've um clocked off i will put the link to that in in the comments for people fantastic thank you very much for that we've got loads more people coming onto the live we've got head and leave we've got adele hi adele adele's another one of the speakers faith smith mike hall said whoop whoop Serpa, uh, Serpa, Petra. We've got loads of people. Uh, Tracy, Maria Sponotsky. I know a husband as well. <laughs> Hi, Tracy, we need to get you on stage at Our Women in Business because what you guys are doing in Wales is absolutely amazing. They run massive expos in, uh, in, oh, uh, awesome. in Wales. So, uh, yeah, so they're up that way. So we need to um, have a conversation and get her speaking at my, uh, my Definitely. next business event. And uh, there's Mercedes, there's Alex Gordon, Patricia... Longford. So basically, yeah. So look, what are the key assets everyone should should have in place as foundational marketing strategies? Do you say? Would you say? Big question. <laughs> um, so in that don't respect, ask me, don't ask me to say that again. <laughs> I don't, well, my, the list can go as long as my arm, basically. Especially from my passion being marketing, I always think everything's essential. But um, like I alluded to at the beginning of the live. The most essential thing to have is the awareness of your positioning. So who, who, what gives you credibility? Who do you serve? So who's your avatar or ideal client, which that word also means? Who is your ideal person that you want to with, uh, work with? And you need to describe them in so much detail, not just women aged 35 to 45. That's not enough. I need you to go really deep into all their pains and aspirations and where they shop and you know, everything about them. So you could recognize them if they walk past you on the street. Once you've got your positioning clear about your, your bio, your expertise, your purpose, your message, your USP, your intellectual property, the processes, the journey, the, 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 the techniques that you teach people, that is the thing that you need to start with. Because if you don't have that, you can't do the marketing, as you said. You don't know the language or the problems to solve. And you also don't know your particular spin on things. So the positioning piece is really key to start. Once you've got that, then the next step is to go, okay, how do I reach people? And the best way to reach people is by creating some free lead generation resources. Now, these are normally digital, I heard you say. Digital is the way forward because... You don't have to swap your time for money. There's no barriers on how many people it can reach in whatever country across the world. Mm. But these are, they could be um, checklists, videos, guides, anything to basically say, you're searching for this word, this keyword. So it could be something like, um, how do I stop um, headaches, right? That's what, the, you're, you're some sort of nutrition coach that does loads of stuff, but the really common pain that people have is how do I stop this headache? Now you can just put together a quick fact sheet about the 10 different types of headaches that are out there, cluster and hydration and stress and blah, 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 and a few top tips on how to overcome them. Because you're meeting your client, your avatar, exactly where they're searching for. They know they've got a headache, they wanna get rid of it. You go, bam, here's my guide, done. And, and so you're, you're not telling them all about how to have a perfect diet and how to do exercise. That's the stuff that they don't even know that they need yet. They need yeah. you to solve their problem of a headache. So if you can create lots of lead generation resources out there, three to four, don't just have one, which are digital guides that can be out there being promoted by email. You could put it at the end of a Facebook Live. You could put it in your social media that are attracting people to you then the next stage is to then have an email nurture campaign that is not a, I hate this, when you sign up to something and the next email you get is a, hey, come and buy my product, right? No, I'm not talking about 
spammy salesy emails mm. these emails are ones that it's like you want to have a virtual cup of coffee once a week with your ideal client that's come into your inbox so it's just about you sharing some more value sharing some more advice sharing a bit about you ex- asking for exchange and then nurturing them so they build trust with you over a couple of weeks or a month or so because then they're like you know this this person i didn't know who they were but actually they really seem to get me they understand me and what they're saying of how they've worked with before is what i actually want so how can i do something else with them so that first lead generation leads into an email nurture sequence that then you've got to have some form of product to help them at the early stage. And, and those are products that are quite relatively cheap. So under a hundred yeah. pounds, I would say. So it's a bit of a no brainer for people to go, yeah, okay, I want this. I like her. She's given me some insight into her world and I trust her. Let me spend $40 on this next program, which might be a short mm. online course or a, a boot camp or something. And, and so those are the, the three key things for people to really start momentum, getting reach, um, have, making some sales at the early days of their business. And then the last one, which is the most important, is your social media strategy, right? We know we have to be on there. We have to be on the platform that your ideal client hangs out on. So obviously mm. yours is on Facebook, there's right? Because you've got all these people joining your live and your, your, your audience is being built here. So you've got to work out, do I have a group? Do I have a page? How do I do it? What's my... I don't want you hanging out on social media and just chatting to people and wasting time because you'll just get diverted and you end up watching cat videos all day long, right? So what you want to do is you want to be on there with a purpose. You've got to have a strategy knowing what's the content I'm posting on this daily or weekly basis. What are the stats I'm looking for for likes, shares, engagements, comments? What's, and, and you need to analyze is it working? Is it converting into sales? Is it converting into engagement? And have a strategy so you're, you're using social media as an advantage, not as a time-wasting tool. Because most people I speak to, they go, yeah, I'm on social media. But when I ask them what they're doing, there is no strategy behind it. They just yeah. are there looking for opportunities, which isn't going to work. So they're, they're my key things. Is just the positioning is key. You've yeah. got to know how you can stand out. And that's exactly what I want to be talking about at, at your event is how to stand out, how to position yourself. But then you've got the lead generation resources to capture people where they're at, at their, what they're looking for on Google, bring them into your world through nurturing them through emails and continue that conversation and demonstration of skills through your social media networks. They're my key things, I would say, at this day and age that we're at, at the moment. Fantastic tips. Uh, uh, before we go on that, uh, Tracy said, go for it, Paul. Paul's a, Paul's a, Paul Almeida is one of the speakers. He's speaking about Forex. How are you doing, Paul? He's asked if we can share this. No, we don't want you to. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. All of, all of you that's on this live, hello. There's more people coming along. Afra, uh, Yatunde, uh, Paul's on there. Deborah, oh, hold on a sec, Deborah. Um, loads more people. Sharon Calix says, great information, so on point. Amanda Hart says, hi, Kelly and Des. They spoke at my previous event, if you know them. Latoya, hi, Latoya. Uh, and other people, Sir, everybody's saying hi and everything else as well. Michael, totally agree. Positioning is key. And Andrew Jules. And I totally agree with that because if you're not positioned, you, people, when you, are, you explain to people about positioning, if you're not positioned in a certain way or a certain place, then no one doesn't know who you are. You know, mm-hmm. the, for example, all of the people that are speaking at my event, they're instantly perceived as an expert by the audience. Yeah. It's the perception. They're instantly perceived as an expert because people that are on stage are providing value. They mm-hmm. have the expert status and, and it's positioning of that as well. And most experts that, that are speaking do Facebook Lives like we are doing now. Yeah. So so Kelly's, Kelly's spot on. Excuse me a sec. I'm just going to... Um, and I'm just going to just going to pick you up on that word expert, Des, because loads of my audience get scared. They go, yeah. I'm not an expert, right? And I know it's the perception, but just to illustrate what um, expert status actually means, you can be an expert in three different ways. So you can be an expert because you've had experience in something. Now that that could be, say, for example, you've got a newborn baby and you can't get that newborn baby to sleep. If another parent you know has experienced the same thing and they've got a technique, 
that they know that works. You want to hear from them, right? They are your expert that night at nine o'clock at right. night. I don't care about their credibilities or their qualifications. <laughs> They've Quite got experience. Oh, no, they have to have a piece of paper, Kelly, to do that. No, <laughs> not when you want to get your kid to sleep at night, right? So, and that's what I'm saying. You can be an expert just by being one or two steps ahead of your ideal client and helping them along the way because you've got the results they're looking for. The second part is actually what we've just said, credibility and qualifications. So obviously, you're not going to be a neuroscience surgeon without all those qualifications, right? You're not going to have neurosurgery from you, the guy down the pub. So sometimes that qualification is really important for your credibility and your reputation. And then the third part, which a lot of people don't realize you can become an expert in this way, is actually being a researcher. So you can be somebody that researches your industry, be a curator of other people's stuff, but be the one that actually creates that hub of information and expertise through other people's stats and research so that you can say, this is the cutting edge thing that's coming up because I've done my research. So... They're the three ways to think about, and, and the ideal is if you have all three elements. So if you've got experience in what you're talking about, credibility and qualifications, and you've done research in your field, that is where you've got the sweet spot of being the expert. But really, you can just be one of those areas. So I don't want people to get put off by thinking, I'm not an expert, which is what I hear a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah. And I totally agree with that. And and we all have that knowledge within us. We all have that expert status within us. And as, yeah. as experts, like mom, our expertise is, is drawing that from those clients, especially the ones that don't have clarity. Yeah. And all of a sudden you think, actually, and then you, you, get them, you, you get something out of them and they think, I didn't know I had that. Yeah. And all of a sudden with the research, and then you show them, actually, John Smith is actually doing that. Have you seen his, and I thought, oh my God, I can do that. And all of a sudden, bang. And that is all that is all it takes. And I agree what you said. The positioning is is key. Now, about the lead generation, this is a prime example of what I'm doing here. I'm interviewing Kelly here on this Facebook Live, everybody. And it's also to to let Kelly share her expertise. But it's also to promote the up and coming event as well. It's in the thread as well. This is shared now all over all over all over the groups and all over the place as well. It positions Kelly. Those that don't know who Kelly is, they'll get to find out who Kelly is because it's shared in all my groups. Those of you that have shared it as well, thank you very much. And vice versa. There's going to be people on, on Kelly's uh, network that have seen myself. We can use this Des O'Connor guy. Yeah. You know, I've, seen, I've seen all their names, the ones you've been saying hi to. I can see all of our Connection Hub and change makers <laughs> joining in. <laughs> joining in. But they're going to look on the link and they're going to say, oh, there's an event coming up. Oh, I'm going to check this event out. It's a free event. Yeah. Also, when they go to my page, they register and they get a free gift for me, which is a video of me on stage talking about webinars for an hour on stage. That's another lead generation. I'm not selling anything to them from at that point there. They watch that. So just to emphasize what Kelly's saying, you're just building relationships with people, keeping it nice and warm. And then eventually further down the road, you will sell them something of value, preferably something small to build the trust and the relationship. And uh, this is spot on. This is the lead gen that we're doing here now. At the same time, we're providing value to you for free as well. Yeah, you're the Fantastic. perfect so, example, Des. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So how do you currently support speakers, authors and coaches then, Kelly? How do you, how do you currently support them? Okay, so Helena and I, as I said, uh, set up the company Speaker Insight. We've only been going since January, so we've actually been wow. quite blown away by uh, how quickly our group's grown. We've run um, a couple of retreats, um, workshops, and two months ago, we launched our membership site. So uh, there are various ways in, in that. In, well, hold on, hold on. Talk, talk to us about the retreat, first of all. Okay. Tell us about the retreat. What's the retreat about? So the retreat is for two and a half days in this gorgeous location in a five-star hotel it's like got castle turrets and stuff that you can uh, walk around the grounds and swimming pools and blah 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 but it's not there about the location it's about the, the training yeah. so we are helping their uh, speakers predominantly on their positioning piece so people come away with their bio created their uh, lead magnets created their intellectual property so their frameworks created this is all stuff that can be repurposed into books or speaking gigs 
um, they get uh, their whole marketing funnel built. So it's not just a, a retreat where you go and learn information. We only have eight people at the retreat so that you can actually work on your stuff with Helena and I in the room and you walk away with it created. So I know there are some people that are on the live watching this that have been at the retreat. Um, so, you know, and, and the Connection Hub, you'll hear all the testimonials. We've literally had people walk away with the main messages that you're saying, that they walk away with so much clarity mm. on who they are now and they walk away with a 90-day plan so that they know what needs to happen when they leave that room. And what we do with them is we also give them um, access to our membership site. So the membership site has a 90-day uh, course in there so people can actually get all the foundations in the business. The bits that I was saying that speakers, authors, and coaches don't do. So it's not just about writing a book and doing a keynote. It's all about how do you manage a business as a speaker, author, or coach. So we help you with those foundations. But the key bit that we listen to from our audience is every week we give you feedback. So you upload documents, which might be your show reels or your marketing copy or your website copy. Or, and then we give you direct feedback on how to improve that because that's what people, they, they feel that they're running a business alone and they don't have that sounding board to go, does this make sense? Or how could I make this title yeah. better? And so the value that we have in our membership site is weekly, we do that every Friday. We have accountability sessions. We have monthly webinars. We interview speaker agents and publishers and people in the industry so they get that insight and knowledge um, from how to build their business on their terms. So there are the ways. We'd love anyone here who's watching this live who's a speaker, author, or coach to come and join us in our free group, The Connection Hub. Uh, we've got a couple of thousand members just, in there. Just and put, we... put the link, put, please put the link in there, Kelly. I will, yeah. do. After I've got this, I'm a bit, I can't do it while I'm up here, but I'll yeah, type yeah, it and put it in after the live. And, and we do free training in there on a weekly basis. And, and the, the group themselves, the people in there, are so supportive. That, and that's uh, why yeah. I wanted to share your link, Des, because... People are always saying, hey, does anyone want to speak on this stage? Or does anyone want to be interviewed Fantastic, on this podcast? Yeah. And it's just a really great community. I'm watching all the love come on the screen. So I'm sure that's from some Connection <laughs> Hub <think> members. <laughs> someone, someone, someone's finger stuck on the button, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but calm down. I think that's for me. One of my female stalkers. <laughs> Oh, oh that's great. <laughs> Listen, um, we had um, uh, uh, Michelle Carville says the re the retreat is great, so useful, um, fantastic. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that's really good, brilliant. And um, you might have <clears throat> listen. This is one of the reasons why we do uh, Facebook lives. Um, Tracy Marie Smolanski, This is a big player in in um, in, in Wales and Cardiff. Yeah, she has know. the biggest expos, and she's put. Let's chat, Kelly, to see how we can help each other. So there we yeah. go. She's in commission, the connection hub, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Commission, please, to uh, desoconnors.com. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tracy and I, God, we probably met about eight years ago, seven or eight years ago. So, God, yeah, her and Paul, awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Brilliant. I mean, I mean, that's great. And that's, that's what it's all about, networking and collaborating. Because you just don't know who's watching you. Uh, you know, the so, thing is, with social media, and you most probably agree with this, I mean, I get people that I don't know. I get people that are not Facebook friends, that are not LinkedIn friends. I've seen my stuff. And yeah. I, don't use, I don't use Facebook ads. I never spent a penny on ads. And then I, the thing is, what we don't realize is, is how we are perceived outside. Yeah. The only way you and me are going to know how we are perceived is by feedback. That's yeah. the only way you're going to know. And because we're, we're on the opposite side. So when you get a, a lot of people, I mean, I go out to events, I'm out, out and about, and people say, oh, I saw your event. I said, oh, we Facebook friends. And they say, oh, well, and then you go and check and they're not. Like, How the hell did you know? Yeah. So it's possibly oh. <laughs> um, someone, somebody shared it. Somebody shared it. Or it could be like I I'd, I'd posted some videos on LinkedIn and maybe something to do with the keywords or I don't know how it all works, but there's people that are knowing what I'm doing out there, which is absolutely great. And for likewise with you, you don't know how many people are, are, are watching you on a daily basis. And it's quite scary, but it's nice <laughs> in a way because you, you don't know who's who. You don't know yeah. who's watching you. And then all um, of a sudden, I've had, Pete, I've had a, a client that's been watching me for two years. And I wow. never knew that. And she eventually became a client because I've been watching you for two years. And it had to be the right time for me yeah. to work with you. And she did. And she spoke on stage 
for the first time. So you just you just don't know who's you watching don't. Matter. And and that's why there's two things from that. That's why it's really key for you to be consistent, consistent with your marketing and your message. Because yeah. then people that have been watching you for two years go, they see that you're, you're dedicated, that you're, you are really about this and you're not just doing this because you saw a gap in the market and you want to create something out of that product because you think it's, oh, I'm going to make some money from this. When people see the authenticity, and it's a bit of a taboo word at the moment, but when people see that you really love what you do and you breathe and eat and you, you are a living embodiment of your work and you yeah. get the results, that's when they're drawn to you. And I think the other thing about branding is your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. That's right. Right? So you're never going to know until you hear people introduce you to other people and you go, that's exactly what I say about myself. So when you hear strangers say, oh, she's the person that helps speakers, authors and coaches build businesses on their terms. I'm like, my stuff's working, right? Because they're introducing me how I would introduce myself. So yeah. I think it's really important for you to be consistent with your marketing, your messaging, and just always show up because you are always visible. You never know who's watching. You just, you just don't know. You just don't know who the next stalker is going to be as well. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, if you haven't got stalkers and haters, just bear in mind, whatever business you're going to be having, and the more you're rising, you're going to upset a lot of people. Yeah. You're going to get. You're going to rock that down. boat. They're going to rock that boat and you're going to get people thinking, how the hell, how the hell is that guy, uh, this man is doing all these women in business events and he's, he's caught, I'll keep seeing his adverts pop. You know, the best ones, the best ones are the ones that you know they're haters and you know they hate you, but they don't want to block you because they want to add all your friends and all that stuff. <laughs> but then they keep getting the notifications. <laughs> they yeah, keep getting reminded about. It's a, it's a really good thing to see. If you're following is much bigger than your likes on your page, then you know that you've got people that are watching that don't want to give you the credibility of adding likes to your page, but they want to keep and knowing your stuff. So you've got loads of followers and that's because your competition is keeping an eye on you. And, and, and that's right. And, and another way you can tell is that, um, uh, is, I, I did this the other day, there was somebody that I was watching, actually I'm watching that person. And I think they had something like 220 uh, mutual friends. Okay. I said, okay, cool. And I must've did, put a post up and there must have been hundreds of people commenting. And then the next time I saw that person's <laughs> friends list, they had something like 450. Where do you think those extra 200 came from? <laughs> it's a funny number, isn't it? It's an amazing funny. overnight success. <laughs> <laughs> Careful you don't get blocked by that. So before we conclude, um, Kelly is one of the main speakers at my event next in the next four weeks, creating women in business experts. And she's going to be talking about, she's going to tell us in a second, but Kelly, I don't want you to give them too much away because they're not <laughs> you know going to come. You know me too well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hold them back. <laughs> yeah, they're not, they're not going to come. I, I did that with a live with someone before and they told them all they're going to be talking about. And I said, well, you, there, there's no point in me coming to see your presentation because you just, I said, oh, yeah, sorry, I didn't know. So what, what, what are they going to be so, doing so from the event? I just tell them the title, right? The title is... <laughs> So I'm going to be talking about how you can stand out as a speaker, author, or coach. So it is talking about the positioning piece that I said is the, the real key main asset that you need to have. Um, but it's also about just working out if you are that person that talks on leadership or you are that life coach, how do you niche but not too far? How do you make yourself be an attraction magnet? So you could line up four or five other people in exactly the same industry as you doing the same thing how do you stand out so i want to go through the, the the things that you need to have in your in your positioning assets but also your marketing and also your product line and the pricing point so that people can actually experience you and go i i i this person gets me so not only on paper do they look good and they look like the right person for me to go and choose to work with but how do you build that instant connection so people go, she gets me, I understand her, I like her, and I want to work with her? Because yeah. the tip, there's a real fine tipping edge between when people have to choose. We've got a scenario at the moment with Helena's got, uh, had somebody who said, oh, you know, there's three coaches I want to work with at the moment, and you're one of them. And I'm just going through the process of which one I'm going to choose. So you, you, we know the things that go through their head 
and we help the people actually make that decision. So I want to impart at your, at your event, Des, how people can make sure that they know that stuff, they've got clarity on the decision points, but they're also marketing it so people are aware. Because people go, oh, yeah, I do that. I, I'm like, well, you don't say that on your website. You don't say that in your pitch. How are people supposed yeah. to know that that's a part of your USP, of your offering? So I want to help people really stand out because it's really easy to be an author these days. You can self-publish, you can hybrid. You don't have to go to the, the traditional publishers and wait for that deal. It's really mm. easy to speak on stage. You can get, we've got a directory in the Connection Hub of over 200 stages that you can speak on for free. You know, it's, you know we can do gigs like your gigs. So you don't have to be doing straight into the agency paid corporate gigs to get speaking gigs. So if there are lots of people becoming coaches, speakers and authors, you've got to work so much harder to stand out now. So yeah. I want to help the people in your audience at that event really get clarity on how to do that. And I hope and that I... wasn't too much. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to block you, but it wasn't having it. Wasn't having it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, I, I totally agree. And, and one of the things that, most things that I get involved with, um, I, I try not to, I try to make it look different than everybody else. And, and you know, I, the research that I've did with working with women in business, I don't know another man that I know in the world to date that I'm aware of that is uh, coming out there publicly and saying, I work with women in business. I create women in business experts. So what then happens is that, that positions me as mm -hmm. an expert in that area overnight, mm -hmm. instantly. And then people are thinking, well, I then stand out, not just a, a, a person that's putting on an event because women uh, promote and network and absorb information and share it better and better and completely different mm -hmm. than men. And, and that's yeah. how it is. And yeah. I've got all these women, all these women that are speaking at my event, they're sharing the hell out of it. And that's why everyone's seeing it left, right and center. And, and all of a sudden now they get these opportunities for them to be speaking internationally. So, you know, I totally agree yeah. with what you're saying. You need to be positioning is important. You need to be different and, don't just be the same old, same old person that's out there doing the same thing because um, then you're going you're gonna to lose clients from that because people are going to say, isn't that, isn't that person doing that? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm gonna... And then they go and check them out and all of a sudden you're losing yeah. some of your clients that are, that are doing, doing that as well. And, and it's about, I like people to be, um, I don't like people to be vanilla, right? Because vanilla is really easy to forget. I want you to be something like Marmite where you either love or you hate you because at least then you're memorable. People go, oh, I, I don't like that person or she was awesome. Yeah. And, yeah. and that doesn't always have to be about your content or your uh, credibility and your positioning. Sometimes it's your style, right? Sometimes it's the way that you come across, the, the way that you deliver things, whether you do it in a, it, you're a, mag a magician and a keynote. I've got a couple of those that I've managed before. Or maybe it's just the fact that you, you use a certain analogy of adventure and all your stories have got that uh, analogy. Or maybe it's the fact that you do everything with humor. And, you know, you're, you're a really funny speaker or author or coach and people like to be around you. There's definitely um, Steve Trister is someone who I is, have worked with who is an awesome comedian, but also a keynote presenter as well. So think about the style that you stand out in as well as what you do. It's really, really important. Because that's what makes right. you memorable. That's right. And we've had lots of comments on there and people are still coming on. Don't you not, aren't you not married? <laughs> <laughs> Where's your husband or your partner? No, on a serious <laughs> note, um, Andrew, Andrew J. Jew says, love your work, Desmond. Thank you very much. Um, we've got um, uh, Shugra Kalik. Have I done that right? Sorry. Helena. Hello, Helena. She says, that's yes, what this is funny. Right. <laughs> hello, hello, Helena. Um, yes, be Marmite. <laughs> Um, always um, Bilal Jamil public speaker trainer go Des O'Connor go loving it Kelly thank you very much Bilal hi Hannah Hannah spoke at my my last women in business event and I've spoken at her women's events uh, Aisha Aisha Dale um, uh, property uh, the property travel expert if you want to get a good uh, cheap holiday she's a person there as well and <laughs> Drews Shab Shabnam hi Shabnam lovely to have you on the live who else is there? Helena saying, yes, it's, um, it's all about standing out. It's good for you, Des. It's perfect for you. Thank you, Helena. Is she
coming um, to the event as well? Is she coming on to the event, uh, Kelly? Helena, um, I think so, yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Uh, we've got Margaret, I hope you're well. Yvonne, uh, Tracy said she wants to connect with you as well. So we've coming up to wrapping up because all I need is this last time my there was technical difficulties and uh, my phone just froze on me. So if this happens, Kelly, you just carry on, okay, as normal and just and just sort of wrap up. But listen, guys, thanks for the live. If you can all um, share this as well, because I've can you hear me, Kelly? Because I seem to have frozen. We can hear you. I think you've just frozen on the screen, but I can hear you. So keep on going. <laughs> I was. Do you know what's happened? I haven't frozen because when I was at school, I always, always. Always used to win. What was it? Um, statues. What statues. Was it statues. <laughs> what was the bit? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just winding everybody up. As you can see, I'm a bit of a joker, but it's all good. It's your style. <laughs> you it's your style. Sta <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, haven't seen, <laughs> you haven't seen me on stage yet. I actually crack up at my own jokes before I've said it. <laughs> That's not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Kelly, you've got some links that you can share. Um, Leah Gold says, good to see you both together. Looking forward to the event. Hi, Leah. I met Leah about eight, seven years ago. Um, a massive event. Hope you're doing well. She lives, um, where does she live? Somewhere far out. Is it Norwich? Yeah, she's, she's one. No, no, no. She's um, up in, not Birmingham. Oh, my God. I've completely forgotten Cambridge? That. Is it Cambridge? No, 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 no. Oh, my God. She's one of our change makers. She's one of my best friends. <laughs> That's what happens when you're in a live, right? You can't That's remember. Right. You know Obviously, you're not that important, um, Leah. <laughs> <laughs> we, can't, we can't remember where you're from. It's all good anyway. So listen, Kelly, put your links in the... Um, if do. people can get hold of you, put your links in there. Everybody, thanks for coming on to this live, even though I'm still still. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Leicester. That's it. Leicester. 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 The Leicester. Because we beat Leicester on Sun Saturday, didn't we? Yeah, we beat them two one. <laughs> oh, it's all gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I must admit, this is the most fun Facebook live I've had for a very long while. Because some of them are quite dull, but it's all good. So listen. <laughs> Put your links in there. Listen, everybody, thanks so much for coming on to this live. Um, we're going to share this on um, LinkedIn as well. Something else that you could say as well. We can share this on LinkedIn to get more exposure. I have over 15,000 connections on there. So put your, your link in there, please, Kelly. Well and, done. Um, you know, and if you want to know more about our retreats and what else she does, her membership, and her, please join her group. Kelly, please put that. Uh, into the thread and um, anything else you want to conclude with Kelly before we go no apart just all you, apart... it's a no-brainer to book a ticket to the event right it's just you need to be there there's so many amazing speakers talking on things that can grow your business from all different areas so I just look forward to seeing you all there fantastic and it's free so it's, you know, and we, it's free actually, what, <laughs> we'll actually pay you to come <laughs> so pay, awesome. I mean, God, you can't beat that. We'll pay you to come, but it's great. Yeah. Um, people are now coming onto the live. Uh, Sadia, how are you doing, Sadia? We're now wrapping up now. Um, and uh, it's all good. Watch Leah the catch up. Very memorable. <laughs> yeah, watch the catch up. Yeah, go back and watch the replay. Uh, come on to our live. We put it out there with 7 30. Why are you coming on at 8 45? What are you taking us for? <laughs> Listen, Kelly, thanks for your time. I've shared this in your group as well. If you've got any other awesome. questions, give us a shout. And everybody, thanks so much for coming on to this live. Um, don't, this, I don't always look like my mouth open, so don't worry. There's a lot of flies going to fall in there. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks very much for the live. Thanks, Kelly. You've Bye, been amazing. Everyone. We'll talk soon. Bye, everybody. Have Take care. Evening.